Alrighty. No second. <clears throat> Greetings, Jameson. Just getting some stuff set up. Um, kind of a crappy setup. I got my phone tied up. Um, up above, kind of a hokey setup. So, uh, give me a second to try to be somewhat organized. And, let's see, this help? Alright. Time Loop Soup in the MPDE K Nerf, Robbie Jarrett. Good Sunday afternoon, for those of you on this uh, this continent anyway. No solid plans necessarily, just uh, figured it would be a good opportunity. I had to straighten up some things anyway, kind of have a project here going on that's uh, kind of a uh, last minute, not last minute, unplanned, unscheduled build. This is for Armod74. Good day to you. This is a project for Ragnarok. Um, I realized I don't have anything really effective that's really good for uh, actual warring. I've got my end war build, but nothing really uh, distinctive. I've sold either all of the integrations I'm working on, either unfunctioning, not mine, or you know what have you. So I'm trying to build something real quick that is me, and it's a build that I've been wanting to build anyway. So, uh, how's the audio? Like I, like I said earlier, my, I just got my phone setting up here, kind of precariously perched up above. Um, I've got the fan going because it's beastly hot out here in the garage, so how's the, uh, how's the audio? How's everything sound? Am I too loud, too quiet, echoey, or what have you? Fine? Excellent. Okay. So, this is just kind of where I left things the other day because I had to leave, leave kind of quick. Um, but this is basically, um, obviously haven't posted anything about this on the channel yet. I have posted on Facebook and Instagram. Um, about this, but it is a Rapid Strike Centurion. Basically, the um, the center ride, which also hasn't been on this channel yet, but if you you've probably seen it on Facebook or Instagram, um, is the counterpart to the, the Centaur build, and it just came out so darn good as I was building it that I was like, man, I I, I need one of these for a personal build, and uh, but I didn't want it to be exactly the same. Um, I did used to use a Rapid Strike. Uh, before the um, Marauder, but I sold that, and that was kind of my go-to for backyard wars and just casual stuff, things like that. So I did want to build another Rapid Strike, but I did like the compact package of the uh, the way the Centaur I'd had it, where it's just kind of lopped off here up front. Um, but I'd wanted to reuse the detail here, like I had on the Jackal. Like so. Good day, Wolfpack Nerf. Uh, the bad part is here with the Jackal is that the Magwell, I do like the Magwell detail, but it's a darn long bit. I mean, that's a 12 round mag. It doesn't leave you a whole lot of room to work with. And so I wanted something that still had the cool aesthetic, um, but was also didn't affect uh, reloads at all. So I do want this to be. Fairly simple, lightweight, compact, very efficient. Time loop soup. Uh, going to be a long stream. Um, I probably don't anticipate on being out here more than an hour. Like I said, it's uh, really, really warm out here. And so I probably will get kind of pooped uh, before too long. But I did want to have a chance to come out and just uh, at least get some work done and say hi to everybody. So this is a much shorter detail on the... Let's see, it's back out. On here, on the Jackal, I have the 
back of mag strike portion here um, lined up because you have this nice straight edge here and it leaves you enough room up front. But I was mocking some stuff up, and I don't, I don't, can't remember if I posted the mock-ups or not on Instagram and Facebook. But I was sharing some pictures with Exiled, and he says, "Hey, why don't you cut out the straight portion and focus more on the on the more angle here, because it'll match the angle of the grip and the magwell front and stuff like that." So, um, so I did trim that off, and that moved the magwell back. So I'm still able to use this kind of cool, um, kind of hooked line here. I did lose some of it. I, it did have a lot more of a radical hook back. There again, kind of like this here, if this is in frame. Um, I wanted to use more of that detail, but in order to keep it tucked up nice and neat and, you know, to pull all the, all the details up, because I wanted to be able to have the bottom end short, but I didn't want to have the slots so close to the bottom that it looked kind of weird. I wanted to have enough room here, but also be able to trim it up a little bit. Um, but it just kind of the way everything fit, I did lose some of that, but that's not a big deal. I'm more, I'm more concerned with the way everything fit here. Like, let's see, right? There's only like, just a little bit, like, not even half an inch, more like a, yeah, just under a half inch or so here up front. For when you're inserting here, um, there's probably an inch and a half maybe here towards the back, so it shouldn't really affect reloads too bad. I am going to add some panels in here after uh, after I add the insert and all that. Um, I'm going to add some walls, the glue in the bottom here, and then kind of flare out to meet the edge here, so it's kind of like a really, really exaggerated. Um, flared magwell kind of affair. That way it doesn't... I'm able to use the extra material here, not only for aesthetics, but also be able to use it to a slight advantage for um, reloads and stuff. And even if I don't, it still should still help at all a little bit, but I do want to add something there. Oh. Mick Farrell, kind of random. How and where did you learn to integrate so well? What's your day job? Uh, honestly, I'm a uh, delivery guy for the uh, school district out here, kind of. But I suppose a lot of the integrating stuff... Uh, I've been working on cars my whole life. I grew up around um, building, um, you know, working on classic cars and stuff like that. And so I do have a lot of um, interest in that. I do have a lot of interest in, like, 50s, 60s style customs, lead sleds, um, Barris built stuff, things like that. So I do have that kind of background. I did work with scale models and kind of worked with, uh, you know, chopping tops and, and doing some custom stuff like that in scale. Um, but that, those kind of abilities and that kind of experience kind of prepped me for this, but I don't really have a day job where this directly uh, benefits me. Uh, Wolfpack Nerf, working on a Stryfly. Do you think it would look cool with the front of a Chris Vector? Uh-huh. It's, it'd be an interesting take. You'd probably have a little bit of uh, conflict if you're using the thumb hole, but if you just use the front portion, just the actual magwell wraparound thing, that would look kind of cool. Depends on how it blends with the rest of your build and how, how you approached the Stryfly part of things. Uh, RC Rider, have you seen Strife Kronos? I believe I saw part of that. Is that the one that's underbarreled? Or I think I saw a brief picture of that, but I can't recall details on it right off the bat. Um, is the gun delete? Da, 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 da. Penguin Star, okay. It's a rapid strike. It's just using the Centurion shell for aesthetics and stock and stuff like that. So basically, it's a rapid strike function, but it's really just functioning as internal components and stuff like that. Um, I was... Originally, I had these, this little bit here, because I do want it to be comfortable. That's kind of my primary thing. I was using this part of the Rapid Strike, because I really, really like how that fits for, like, you know, hugging your hand on it like that. I was really, really digging that. Exiled! How are you? What time is it over there in Singapore? How are you doing? Um, but I was looking at it, and... I'd, I'd photoshopped a couple pictures and stuff, and it looked okay, but looking at it in person, it just made the front end really tall feeling. 
and I just wasn't really comfortable with that because I was just going to carry it forward, but I couldn't find a enough pieces of other things that would kind of match the same dimensions here to be able to pull it forward. So what I've done, 19 a.m. Ah, oh, good morning then, Exiled. Uh, where's my thing? Where's my thing? Where's my thing? There we go. Um, this is the top of a Magnus. Yeah, there you go. I'm used to, when I record, the camera is facing the other way, and so in my brain, it's upside down. So, yeah, it's... I'm just... I'm kind of relearning how to do this streaming bit, so everything is oriented correctly. Okay. Um, this is the top of, top of the Magnus, where the um, bolt and stuff is right here. But I have that fitted. And this is just kind of a rough cut that I made before I had to leave for the evening the other day. But it's kind of fitting like that. Because um, I did like the idea of having it kind of drop down a little bit. Kind of like uh, some real steel firearms, which I'm not going to try to name names because I'm not a firearms guy. I just, it's just, I don't have ex enough experience to, uh, to know that sort of thing. But I did like that kind of drop down. And then it's going to be flat here. And then this line here, which you see as this file is kind of a straight edge, will kind of mimic that a little bit. I might have to pull that angle back a little bit to not affect the actual magwell. But I do kind of like this detail where it comes down. So it'll be kind of like that, so it won't be quite the same angle, maybe. Uh, not sure. Not sure how I'm going to fill in this hole as well, either. Uh, but I did like this line, and that's kind of the main focus, because it keeps the top end a little more tri a little trimmer. Because, where's my piece? The way this fit before... Um, you know, it was kind of like that, so we actually pulled it up about half an inch or so. Oh, crap, boy, you guys are talking a lot. Try to get, get caught up real quick. Um, yeah, the, uh, mod would go. Uh, Michael Huetti? Sorry, I've got a weird glare on the screen here. Um, do you think an op sentinel mod would go? I'm planning to use PVC and parts are telling you. But interesting. Uh, the Sentinel is a good base to work with. I'm not sure how well the parts would interchange as far as you'd have to modify a lot of stuff to make it work. But I think um, Sentinels do have quite a bit of potential for performance. So if you can get a little cool aesthetics in there, then that'd be super neat. Uh, Sergeant TX 7823, nice work. Thank you very much. Um, not sure if I told you this. I have Busby Air Max 6 on the top of the Firefly. Just pumped by there. Oh, gotcha. You showed me that on Facebook, I believe. Yes, I remember. I think, yeah. I think I've, I've seen pictures of that somewhere. That's cool. Okay, ours, you're right. I think you posted that on Reddit. I'll have to look. I'll have to check that out again. That's like I said. I kind of saw that briefly, um, but didn't get a chance to really analyze it. What putty? What putty do I use for connecting shells? I use Devcon plastic welder. It's a methyl methacrylate, which I talk about in well, lots of my actual model on videos and stuff. I am actually planning to have a video just about DevCon and how much I like DevCon. Let's kind of put a little more zoom on that, see if you can read that in this light. Um, trying to catch up for the delay on the screen. There we go. Okay. Yeah, it's um, it it's a two-part mix like epoxy, but it's far different than epoxy. Instead of having like an adhesive bond, it's like an actual chemical bond that like literally welds and melts the plastic together and it's super super hardcore um works really good i like it it does it's like a it's like a product made exactly for this purpose which i really like so yeah i do plan on doing a video on this in the future just talking about the benefits of devcon doing some kind of test um merge pieces versus epoxy and kind of show how how it works in detail uh something that i can link easily instead of trying to remember what uh, what model long episode it was and what timestamp and stuff but yeah, DevCon Plastic Welder. There's also uh, Loctite, Permatex. Uh, I think I can't remember who else, but it's it has a kind of a similar uh, product. But it is methyl methacrylate. Um, brand. Crick sucks. It's 
that the gel won't really more clear water down. This is pretty, um, it's a consistency that's really hard to explain. It's kind of gooey, um, but kind of, it's kind of sticky. It doesn't really, it's, it's spreadable, but it wants to cling to the actual spreader stick thing. It's really tricky to work with, especially like your first time. It's just really difficult to work with until you get a handle on how it acts and how it just, yeah, just how it acts and stuff. But it is a fairly, con it's, it's a little bit self-leveling. Like you, you spread it around and it will settle a little bit, um, but it's not runny. I wouldn't call it runny. So, um, got that guy there. Got to put this guy away. Nothing has changed on this since, because I've, I've been getting a whole lot of questions and stuff on, you know, comments on other videos, Instagram, Facebook, and stuff like that. People messaging me saying, how's this going? There's been no change on this since the last update, uh, because shortly before that, or shortly after that update, I had to get started on end war prep and stuff like that, and then I just haven't had a chance to get back to it quite yet. But it is still very much... Uh, in the box, getting worked on off and on. Um, I just have other stuff that I'm working on. In the meantime, I've got a few ch things that I might want to change on it, so I'm kind of waiting to see how I really feel uh, if I really want to go so far as to make some rather drastic changes to it. So it's one of those where it's like, do I change it on this, or just do I build another one later on using those different changes? So, but yeah, it's, it's very much still here, very, um, you know, very much a project, but it's just kind of sitting on the sidelines for a little bit. Uh, RZ Rider, speaking of that. Oh, okay, I did get to meet you. I think I think I recall I'm so bad with faces and names and stuff, like if if anybody said hi or something that I should know and I didn't recognize you, whatever, I am awful with names and faces. So if, if I didn't recognize you, and I should have, I'm sorry. Um, but I do recall meeting everybody, and so it's not like I'm like, oh, yeah, whatever. No, it's it was awesome to get to meet everybody, and especially you, somebody who I've chatted with quite a bit, uh, you know, behind the scenes and stuff like that. It was really cool to get to meet you guys uh, in, like, in person and, and try to kind of put faces to names, even though a lot of people have different names for different uh, outlets and, and stuff like that. So... Yeah, we got this guy. Um, I was going to do some cleaning, but I don't think I'll really clean up so much as I was originally planning. Um, uh, putty, flex a stick, um, pump action retaliator, deploy pump, grip the pump. Oh, cool, nice. It's always nice when you can uh, wolf pack nerf, when you can scratch build stuff to... Uh, you know, instead of just buying kits, I, I admit I have a couple of pump action retaliator kits, only because I didn't quite feel I wasn't quite sold on the retaliator platform for modding, and so I wasn't quite to the point where I wanted to start integrating stuff in there. But no, that's super cool. I have seen some really, really good, really, really good ones. Uh, scratch build pump action retaliators and stuff. I'm just gonna drag this through because it's in the. Oh, you got. Oh, you can see it. Yeah, it's on the screen. So. I'm just going to drag this through kind of slow so you can think about it. This isn't mine, but it is a build that will be coming on the bench sometime. Um, I do have posts on Facebook and Instagram for a few details on that if you're curious. Nick Farrell, one day we should organize a modders convention and we could go to Santa Mars. Um, yes, that's actually... Um, there's been talk from organizer people, not necessarily seriously plans or anything, but just the idea of having seminar kind of things. Um, if only FoamCon wasn't so rushed, it would be so cool if that was a two-day event. Like, just would have been so cool if we could have two days, one day to really sell stuff and then have a more of a casual day where you could have seminary type things or panels or just stuff like that. But I think I think with how, how successful and everything that Endwar was this year, I suspect there's going to be some really pleasant changes for next year. I'm really excited to see what, what next year brings. Especially just with the, the developments of Ragnarok, um, Ragnarok Toberfest, from just the point for, like, it, it's, it, to my knowledge, it wasn't necessarily planned to be anything of what it is right now before End War. It's kind of like, since then, it's developed rapidly, 
into becoming something pretty cool. So it's really it's going to be exciting to see what what the the advances are in a whole year's worth um, for next year's end war, which I am at this point still planning on attending, uh, but I can't confirm because uh, anything can happen. So. Uh, Demolish a long shot. It's gonna have a stock. Actually, it came with a stock, kind of, but it didn't quite work. It's going to get pistolized, but I have plans for that um, part of things. Um, not quite. Um, not quite solid on those plans. It was just an opportunity that opened up that I jumped on to get a hold of. So I haven't really quite looked at it too close uh, in the meantime. Is that a Magnus Topwell? I'm twiddling. You're darn right. Yes, that's should look like that, but it's going to look like that. Um, uh, well, good night, time loop soup. Sorry we didn't get a whole lot done. Rest well and have a wonderful day tomorrow. So what I want here is to have a bit of a drop down as far as, um, which, well, I don't know, I'm kind of torn on, because I've got, I've got, um, you've got like this flat edge here, this, this face that kind of breaks at this point, breaks in a little bit, and then flattens off. Part of me wants to be able to use this whole ledge here, and then come in kind of like that, depth-wise. Um, but part of me also says this would be kind of cool to have it just kind of more of a continuous line wrapping around all the way around but it depends on how close I can get this to fit like I said I've only cut one and it was a really quick cut because I had to go out because it was my wife's birthday dinner that we went to and I had to meet her in town so I just kind of made a real quick a quick cut and was like yeah that's totally going to work and then had to disappear so we can uh, work on that now, um, Nick Farrell, have to head out to to do more of these really cool watching you work and chatting with you another door. Yeah, darn right. So I really, I've really enjoyed some of the other live streams from from everybody else. In fact, there's been several times I've been wanting to live stream, and I was actually setting up the live stream, and then somebody else started live, live streaming that I wanted to watch. In fact, there's a time where uh, I think Alice started streaming, and I was like, well, I'd rather watch Alice than talk to people. And then uh, Armods did another time, and I was like, you know what? Everybody seems to have kind of the Friday night, Saturday night thing, uh, kind of have dibs on that. So I figured, well, it's been a nice, been a nice, beautiful Sunday afternoon. So I'll see what everybody else is up to, and uh, you know, see if uh, see if I can get in before somebody else starts streaming this time. But no, it's it's really cool. Streaming is such an awesome opportunity uh, for people in the in the community to. I don't know. It's one thing to leave comments and communicate through media like that, back and forth. But to be able to just kind of sit there and hang out and chat with everybody, it's kind of like having everybody over for a mod party. Only you don't have to have anything to drink for anybody and nobody's using your bathroom all the time and stuff like that. Oh. Okay. Um, Penguin Star, should probably go back to sleep back to school. Yes, school starts this week for me as well. Not, not school, I work for the district, so I'm going back to work, but the season is changing, not that there's going to be kids in the way when I'm trying to do my job. Um, Gavin, is this my first live stream? No, there are two? Two or three? Two. I think it's just two live streams when I was kind of first testing on the water, and that was about a year ago because it was stupid hot back then, too. They weren't super good because, well, my equipment hasn't really changed at all. It's still the same camera and all that, but um, it's, uh, well, they can't be that bad. Um, be up here at that space, which you put under barrel, two shot shotgun wizard down there. Um, I've actually got a wizard plan for another project, but I want to keep this this blaster des designed and intended to be uh, as lightweight as possible, as simple as possible. I'm going to put a few electrical gimmicks in there, but I don't want to have, I don't, don't want it to be any longer than it necessarily needs to be, any heavier than it absolutely needs to be, um, and stuff like that. So I'm going relatively, s not, uh, not simple, I hate to use the word simple because it's not simple, but uncluttered. I want to go uncluttered on this one. Otherwise, yes, the wizard is a nice little pistol. I mean, it's it's uh, it's got a little potential. Um, I haven't done the two-shot shotgun thing on it, though, I, uh, but I have opened up the ports a little bit to let it breathe a little easier. Uh, 
Um, I don't know how loud this is going to be on the microphone, so if you're if you got like headphones on, maybe don't put them in for a second. I'm just going to do some cuts on this real quick to kind of match up with this one here, so I can at least start fitting them side by side to see how far I need to trim both of these to get them to meet in the middle to kind of end up with figure out how 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 these are going to end up fitting in relationship to each other. I gotta watch the stream. Okay, well, if uh, you're more than welcome to stick around, if you think you should go to bed, maybe you should go to bed. Um, but I'm not your mother. So it's up to you. Just use your best judgment, though. I don't want uh, don't want you to sleep poorly and then be like, boy, Mr. Nathan and his live streams really screwed me over today. Um, uh, so I have a question about the Chrono Strife I'm working on. I was thinking of hiding a plunger tube system in the Magwell in enough space, and I had to expand the last year to sacrifice look. RZ Rider, that is a common, common, common condition I find myself in. Um, working on a blaster and not being sure whether to, you know, have, having an idea and saying, I want to implement this idea, but by implementing this cool idea, I'm going to sacrifice cool aesthetic or balance or ergonomics or something like that. So it's always a, a balance um, that I don't really have an answer for you. I cannot be your shoulder angel on that. It depends on your what your plans are for the blaster. Is it going to be a cool-looking blaster and primarily a cool-looking blaster? Then you might not want to, want to sacrifice aesthetics for functionality. If it's going to be a functional blaster that you're going to be you know, using and warring with actively, you might want to sacrifice a bit of um, fun functionality or a, a bit of the uh, aesthetics for the better uh, benefits of functionality. So it kind of depends on what your goal, your final goal and plan is for the blaster. Gavin. Mr. Nathan, if I can ask, do you have kids? Yes, you can ask. No, I don't have kids. Have a dog, though. Where is he? Where, where are you? Where are you at? Okay, he's he's asleep on the floor over there. But he's been a good boy. I was cleaning the house like a furious wild man yesterday, and he was being a good boy, which makes it a whole lot easier to do work around the house. So I do appreciate that. RZ Rider, gotta go see you this see you guys. All right, well, hey, thanks for stopping by. Um, I may or may not, depending on how this goes, do these a little more often. Um, I'm not nearly as good at it as other people, but um, when they do happen, you're always more than welcome to stop by. Thank you again for stopping by, and have a wonderful evening. Gavin, I will do my best. Um, I can't, like I said, I've, I have had intentions to several times, but it always doesn't, doesn't, doesn't always work out uh, that way. But I will make an effort to uh, make this happen a little more often, even if I don't actually get anything accomplished necessarily. It's always cool to hang out with everybody. So if nobody else is live streaming, maybe I'll live stream with the uh, hopes that other people will jump in and, and join.
with how often I'm switching back and forth between these things, the cutting and the um, barrel bit, it'd be cool to have that kind of quick change attachment, but I've heard it's garbage, and I don't necessarily want garbage. What do I want? I want this one. I want this one up here. Uh, Matt McCoy, more streams. All right, I will see what I can do, fella. Ugly barbs. Don't see much cleanup and we're working. Well, <laughs> that's why the bench looks like this. Um, I can't really go much beyond that because it's, it's kind of a condition. I, I feel guilty about it with how much of a mess my bench is, but then I go to like somebody else's house or see somebody else's live stream and they're bench looks worse, and I'm like, okay, as long as I can point to somebody else who's worse off than I am, I'm justified, right? I guess I should have uh, warned everybody ahead of time. Is the Dremel noise crazy on you guys? Like, do you need uh, warning ahead of time before I fire it up, or is it not quite so bad? All right. Uh, easy lock thing gets bent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm. Yeah. I've heard bad things about that quick, uh, quick change thing. Uh, Gavin, we can't point out point fingers at Bobo's mess anymore. Yeah, he actually did a heck of a job cleaning that place up. That was really nice. It was actually kind of a, a strangely enjoyable video to watch. <laughs> would have been kind of an interesting live stream uh, with all the weird stuff that he kind of unearthed and discovered again. That would have been kind of uh, kind of interesting to see happen. Uh, you know, watch it unfold firsthand. Oh, tractor started streaming. Ah, well, it's always something, it seems like. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, excellent. All right. Excellent, thank you very much. Holy smokes, 33 of you guys watching. Oh my gosh, I didn't expect that. I expected maybe like a dozen or so. Wow, awesome. Well, welcome aboard. Holy smokes. Um, where's my thing? There we go. Um, normal Dremel. Okay. Okay, thanks. I just wanted to check because sometimes, you know, people live stream and have a Dremel and it's like, it sounds like the Dremel is like in your head. Um, turn your sound. <laughs> uh, will I ever do commissions? I am in the, currently in the middle of one, two, three, four commissions. Um, three people, four projects. Um, one of which nobody has seen, one of which has only been seen on Facebook and Instagram, and the other two are the Centaur and Centauride, which have been featured. Uh, well, actually, Centauride hasn't been on the channel yet either, uh, technically. So, that, actually, that video is coming soon. If you're a, patr a patron, hey, I'm going to plug Patreon. Wah, wah. No, um, I do post videos early. Like, when I make a video, I post it to Patreon first, just as kind of a benefit to those guys. Um, but I do have a Centauride, which is the companion blaster to the Centaur, video that's ready to go. It's actually like a really, really old video from like months ago, like lots of months, like maybe a year ago, that I just haven't done anything with the, the footage at all because I don't want to have videos coming out of it at the same time as the Centaur videos because they're very similar in style. And I don't want to confuse people. Okay, let's... Yeah, there we go. 
Boy, you guys are chatting so much, it's hard to keep up. Uh, which is good. I want you guys to hang out and chat with each other, chat with me, chat with uh, whoever you're darn well please. No one's a stranger here, so you can talk with whoever you want. Uh, would be awesome. Uh, Dremel noise is familiar sound. Yes, would be awesome if somehow the melted plastic smell comes through. Uh, someday we'll have, you know, multi multi uh, sense display stuff. Oh, what was the deal? There's back in the seventies. I think it was the seventies. There's an April Fool's gag that came out from some TV broadcast thing saying like, you know, hey, you're. TVs now have smell of vision and, you know, smells and stuff will come through your TV as well as sound and, and images. And so they, like, this this um, broadcasting company put out, like, videos of people chopping onions and they had people calling in swearing that they could smell the fresh onions and stuff because it was just an April Fool's gag and people are dumb. Um, so maybe someday we'll get to that point. Uh, basically a free master class on integrations. Uh, well, it's... Um, not necessarily a class, but you guys are welcome to ask questions if you uh, feel so inclined. Um, Exiled is in the hypothetical house. Yes, Ed always welcome as well. Um, in the MPDE, better to guess be, be, best get going. Have yourselves a good evening, and you as well, and double doubly so. Uh, Boomtendo, greetings. <laughs> Exiled, you can learn all of my tricks and stuff. Uh, only because I learned most of them from you. So all the people that say that your stuff looks like mine, or, you know, whatever, or your stuff is as good as mine, um, is actually backwards because he started it, and he was one of the first and greatest inspirations that got me going in the first place. So to compare him to me is incredibly unfair. Uh, Gavin, since I have both of you, is the styling similarity between Mr. Nathan and Exiled a coincidence or planned? That's an excellent question. Next. <laughs> I will let him answer, because there's there's a few things that happened um, kind of about the same time that is interesting. And, yeah, there, there has been um, discussion of um, collusion and coincidence and conspiracy and things like that. Um... Kudu, Sobre, integrations are awesome. Thank you. Uh, what we can for your flesh cutters come find them? Yes, these uh, Boomtendo, these cutters, these are just Husky brand, um, but they are pretty common for hobby-ish type stuff. Um, you should be able to get them at most any um, hardware store and things like that, but they are super nice for these purposes. I like them a lot. Um, Pirate Johnson, the exterior piece on the Magwell is from the mag strike it is the actual mag strike main body um i don't have another one to show it's it's the piece that uh, just happens to be missing right here like that more or less yeah kind of like that that is the piece right there of the mag strike and yes this mag strike was not functioning the bladder itself was actually ruptured so that's how I can justify it. Because people do curse when you cut up mag strikes, for some reason. Nobody uses them, but people are still sore when you cut them up. And yes, the, that was a similar uh, use from the Jackal. I did pull that idea from this to this, only in a slightly more practical capacity. Ow. The Russian tortoise. Do I enjoy Tic Tacs? I haven't had Tic Tacs in years, but I seem to recall fond memories of Tic Tacs, so does that count? Uh, boy, I am awful at multitasking, so I, tr I like try to catch up on the chat, make sure I'm answering questions you guys have and stuff like that. Um, but I'm also trying to focus on what I'm doing here and everything else, and so, yeah, sorry about that. If I'm rambling or tripping over myself, um, that's one of the reasons the model along with the Centaur is the only actual model along explained out, discussed video series. Everything else is, is um, um, build logs. 
because it's it's really difficult for me to do what I'm doing and being trying to consci- consciously explain stuff at the same time I tend to get myself derailed which is why I tend to talk a lot of nonsense during those videos as well because I'm like focusing on one thing and then trying to say something else and then I end up doing half of a thought and then you know squirrel different thought so I apologize if I'm doing that here um, but I'm accustomed to working in the solitude of the garage here with just myself and the dog. Uh, do an integration of a Kronos with long strike stock, Centurion Feral, and make it bolt action. Good heavens, that's uh, that'd be a handful. Okay, anyway, yeah, back to this. Keep getting derailed. Okay, so this is where. Can you guys see what's going on? Yeah, I'm not. Uh, 37. Oh my gosh. Um, Earth is. I'm, I'm going to butcher everybody's names and I apologize like crazy. Might be good to get yourself a moderator if it keeps expanding. I am. I had no idea. I think last time I did this, I had like six people. So. Yeah, um, I don't know how quite to do that. I'll have to figure that out or something. Um, if uh, if these become more regular and if uh, people keep coming, then yeah, I will have to do something like that. Figure out who the regulars are and who can be trusted. Things like that. Um, um, yeah, last night. Or am I going to do rival mods? I actually have a handful of rival mods. I don't have actual like cosmetic modifications because most of the actual nerfing that I do in the arena in an actual competitive capacity is rival stuff and so I want to keep that as unchanged as possible and just strictly performance but I do have a mess of those that I was supposed to uh, do videos on last year but life is life so to speak and I just didn't get to it but I do have I, I need to do the dang atlas video I need to do the dang atlas video um, but I've got all my rival stuff hanging up on the wall there, so it's easy to grab. Um, but I do have a full, like, blow up, take apart, and in analyze everything about the Atlas, because that is a build that people keep... There's not a lot of demand for it, but it is... I think it would be a good asset, because there is good information to have about the Atlas to maximize efficiency and just make it as effective as possible. It does have potential, and I still like it. It is one of my favorites still, just because, I mean, that's weird, but... It is one of my favorites, at least for my abilities in my arena and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I do have a handful of rival rival mods and rival loadout videos that I do want to do. <sighs> but I keep cutting stuff up instead, which is okay too. But yeah, I do, I do have plans and intentions, but, you know, there's something about paving roads with good intentions and it's one place I don't want to go. Um... Can I send? Can you send me stuff? I am working on. Well, I'm not working on. I was going to try to do a PO box, but it's a dang expensive in town here. That uh, like prohibitively expensive right now. I do. I would like to because I have to turn away a lot of people who say, "Hey, can I send you this? Um, these components? This? You know, just stuff like that." Um, I've allowed you know some people who I'm, I'm doing business with to send me stuff. But as far as like general uh, information, I don't really want to send my personal address out. Um, but I, I do want to find something because it, it, I mean, yes, I like free stuff, but I also don't necessarily, um, expect people to send me things, but I know that people like sending things. And so in order, like, like I've sent people stuff and I like, I like, I like giving, I like the feeling of giving people things. It makes me feel good. And so I recognize that other people get enjoyment out of giving things too. And so by turning people down and saying, I don't want your stuff right now because I can't take it. I'm denying them that good feeling, so it sounds weird, but it's a, it's a weird psychological thing, and so, um, yes, if, if, if you have offered to send things and I've said I can't take it right now because I don't have the capacity to do so, um, I'm working on that because I do want people to be able to share ideas and stuff like that, and so I am working on that. Like I said, it's just prohibitively expensive right now because we have a small post office and there's a very, apparently a high demand for the box, the PO boxes, and it's just 
Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. But it's going to be like like a hundred bucks for like the little tiny box for the year and it's like or no for like 70 bucks for, th for three months I can't remember what it was but it was like wow expensive um uh, okay you, you people who are telling me how to set up um moderators and stuff I have my phone uh stuck to a boom off of my lighting setup that's actually held in place by hair scrunchies yes because I could find those, and that's that's as, as ingenuitive as I could get. So I do have, uh, for those of you wondering, have a kind of a blue scrunchie and a kind of a uh, regular black elastic that is holding the camera in place right here. So I can't really get up and do a lot of moderator type um, setup stuff. So um, I'll need to, like I said, if this is going to be more regular, then I will try to get a little more high tech with this sort of thing. So bear with me in the meantime, and uh, I will try to get to everybody. This is more, I guess, of a hangout session than an actual trying to get stuff done, uh, answering questions, getting an idea of what you guys actually uh, expect from these streams, I guess. So, um, Homely, welcome aboard, fella. Always glad to have you. Boomtendo says, stop asking questions. Uh, sorry. <laughs> What's the integration of the strong arm American American retaliator? Interesting. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, ran the Russian tortoise. Um, I'll see what I can do sometime. Okay, anyway, where the heck are we at? Oh my gosh. Um, All right, Ski. So what I'm coming across here, I'm going to ignore you guys for a little bit, so no offense if I don't uh, talk to you, I'm going to... Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll do a couple minutes of actually working on the thing, and then I'll try to get caught up on chat or something. Um. <clears throat> okay, j Row. I'm sorry about your phone, but uh, thanks for joining in. 42, oh my gosh, you people, what the heck. I'm blown away right now with, uh, with you guys. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> Um, so what we have here, I was hoping, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm used to having a little more of a zoom with my camera setup, and so I'm, I'm accustomed to working with a curtain, certain amount of zoom, I'm not sure if I can adjust the zoom on the phone, and I'm not going to monkey with it right now, but, uh, so I'm, I guess I'm going to have to hold things up awkwardly high, but there is a line here where the flat top of the Magnus breaks, makes this first angle bend, I was hoping to be able to use that line right there, to meet up with the back strike portion. But with that, there's still the little cutest little gap right here. So I am gonna have to sacrifice that a little bit, um, which means that will affect the lines of things. Um, let's see. I can't really move this surface down any further. Uh, because it's already resting flatly on the existing rapid strike magwell. So, mm, this is one of those points where, under normal circumstances, I will just sit here and stare at this for a long time and try to make a decision. Um, but what I'm going to have to do is take this surface down a little further. Um, this way, cut, make the cut further out, I guess. But, uh, there again, that's going to kind of affect... Mm. That's going to move this line up, uh, because you are moving it at an angle. It's going to move this this transition line up a little higher, which shouldn't be awful. The only problem is that when it moves up higher, the actual break on the part itself isn't going to move. So you're going to have kind of a dog leg kind of affair. But at the same token, we are going to be mm -hmm. creating a panel here. I don't know if I'll just have to scratch build something, or if I can use some existing patch pieces to create, you know, to close this gap right here. But then we're going to run into this little triangulator, tri triangulator, tri this guy. We're going to move into this guy. And so that's going to change the relationship of this angle here with everything else. So that's kind of going to be a, a bit of a delicate dance. Um, hopefully 
saved it by just there's there's not a whole lot of a whole lot of distance we need to go to close that gap. If we can hold them straight. Like just that much, but I think it's gonna be enough to make a bit of a difference. So I think we're just going to have to bite the proverbial bullet and uh, just see how this is affected. And it's one of those things where we need these pieces here. We need we need the two Magnus bits to fit.